What's up guys, c 13 here, and today's video is gonna be about how to test a power valve. Now, this power valve was removed from my Motorcraft 2150 carburetor uh, when I was doing a rebuild on my 1979 Lincoln Continental, okay? Uh, and I don't want to spend too much time explaining exactly what a power valve does, but briefly, I will just explain it like this. I will probably go into more detail when I do a power valve replacement video to show you how you actually replace this uh, during either a, a full car rebuild uh, or just the power valve replacement service. So, a uh, carburetor is fundamentally a vacuum operated fuel delivery system. In my case, there's a two barrel carburetor, but in a four barrel or a single barrel, they all work the same way. It's just more than one barrel. So basically, it's a vacuum operated fuel delivery system. And everything works fine at idle because when the throttle plate is near closed or all the way closed, you have the highest amount of manifold vacuum. That means the suction, right? The problem comes is when you floor it and you open that throttle plate all the way up so that butterfly valve just opens all the way up no longer do you have high manifold vacuum in fact it can drop to zero when you're wide open throttle so then you say well well if if vacuum is so low then how, how the hell do you get fuel uh, to run the car good question it's exactly what the power enrichment circuit is with uh, the power valve because what happens is a power valve is sort of a reverse of a standard actuator. So we, ne we normally think that an actuator, it does what it's supposed to do when there's vacuum applied to it, and then it goes off when the vacuum is not applied to it. Well, actually, the, the reverse is sort of true with the power valve in that, as you see, this little stem is, 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 is basically just the top part, and there's actually a little valve in there that seats down. And these little side ports allow fuel to, to enter into the fuel circuit. So when the vacuum is high, there's a vacuum chamber on this side that is completely separated from through by a gasket from the other side. And so when manifold vacuum is applied here, when it's high, you know, at idle or uh, even part throttle, the valve will stay closed, okay? This, this little, little stem here will get sucked down because there's diaphragm in here, and the valve stays closed. But as manifold vacuum drops, as you open the throttle more, this valve will start to rise and let in more and more fuel. And this being a two-stage power valve means that there are two distinct, you know, it's a little bit, you know, not exact, but there are two distinct stages that this power valve opens wide and then wider all the way open. Um, a single stage power valve will not have this separate uh, protrusion on this side. It will just be flat. Uh, most power valves you can get nowadays are only single stage. Like if you go look at a Holly's website, you try to get any Holly carburetor these days, they all use single stage power valves. But this being an older, you know, motorcraft carburetor, it still uses a, a two two stage. So it's very important if you have a carburetor that needs a single a dual a two stage car uh, power valve, you you can only use a two stage power valve. Definitely, if you have a single stage power valve, uh, you you don't want to substitute it for a two stage. So that's the basics. Enough talking about that though. How do you actually test it and what goes wrong? Well, when the, when the power valve fails, the internal diaphragm, there's a rubber diaphragm here, which allows the vacuum to basically pull down the valve, it will fail. It will either get a little puncture, or it'll crack, the rubber will get old, whatever. It'll start leaking. And what that does is it allows fuel to enter into the vacuum circuit where it was never intended to go. And basically, when we talk about a vacuum leak, we say that's unmetered air. Well, in this case, you're going to have unmetered fuel. You're going to have fuel entering into the throat of the carburetor that is not metered in any way by either the idle screws or the main jets. And what that means is you're always going to be running rich. And when you're tuning it, you're not going to be able to get it adjusted right. It's going to buck. It's going to hesitate because you're going to be just dumping fuel in at idle. Um, you're going to get poor gas mileage. And you can foul up your plugs if it's enough uh, you know, excess fuel and all that stuff. All right, you're generally gonna get poor performance, right? It's crucial that if you have a condition like that, that you identify whether or not it's your power valve. Because if it's your power valve, you could fiddle with the settings, you could adjust your screw, uh, your idle screws, change out your jets to whatever you want, change out the accelerator pump, change out the level of the accelerator pump uh, uh, linkage. It doesn't matter because you're not addressing the direct problem, which is gonna be that there's unmetered fuel coming in. And depending on the vacuum, it's a different amount. So it's com completely uncontrolled fuel entry. So 
how do we test this? Well, it's pretty easy. When you pull this, uh, the vacuum cover off the vacuum chamber on the bottom of the, in this case, in my carburetor, it's on the bottom, but in the Hollies, it's behind the bowl. You pull that off. If you see fuel in there, then that means the diaphragm is blown, okay? Now, Hollies in the past were known to blow uh, power valves whenever there was a backfire through the carb. Um, but apparently now they do have a blowback, uh, you know, blowout, power valve blowout protection circuit, something in there. I, I don't know exactly how it works, but they say that that works. For the motorcraft, however, I don't think that's a thing at all. So they are easy to blow the diaphragm because they're not designed to take positive pressure through here. So if there is a sort of a, a, a choke, a cough through the carburetor, which can be caused by, you know, uh, exhaust restrictions or anything like that, uh, that would blow out the power valve. So now that you know what to look for symptoms wise when the power valve is blown and uh, what to see when you're taking apart the carburetor, you want to say, well, how do I test it? Because I know from my own experience that when I rebuilt the carburetor, I got a new car uh, uh, power valve in my rebuild kit. I put it in the carburetor. I thought everything was good to go. I started it up. And no matter what I did, it just seemed like it was running rich, but then lean, but then rich. And it was because I was tuning for it, thinking everything was good. And it turns out the brand new power valve was leaking. Oh, a week ago when I took apart the carb uh, and I took off that, that, that vacuum uh, chamber cover and this fuel just poured out, okay? So it pissed me off. It pissed me off a lot. So for sure, when you get a new carb rebuild kit, you're going to want to know, is this power valve good? So now I'm going to show you how you go about testing that. Alrighty guys, so we're here to uh, show you now what you're going to need to test your power valve. So first thing you're definitely going to need is a vacuum pump. Now this is a mighty vac unit. It's not their super duper deluxe, you know, stainless steel edition or whatever, but it works just fine. And of course you're going to need some clear hose and of course you're going to need your power valve. But the key difference between testing any other vacuum accessory and testing a power valve is of course where the vacuum test would interface. And the issue mainly is that you have this round surface here and it's very wide and you have to find some way to get on there. Okay. So the easiest thing I can think of for the average person to use is uh, with the Mighty Vac kit there's going to be various uh, things that look like this. Um, and it, it would stick in here and then what you would do is get a fatter uh, piece of hose and find a way using one of these prong things to interface the thinner tube here with a larger piece of vacuum hose and then shove that over this bottom part. I happen to doing a retro sound uh, head unit install on my car have one of these uh, volume adjustment knob rubber insulating stems. I, I never needed these, but these came with the kit, and it just so happens it works perfect. So I'll just clean out the dust here, and I'll show you what I do. But basically, all you're going to want to do is find something that it can interface with this bottom part and make a good seal. So now, we're going to place this in here and get a nice tight seal. You can see there, completely sealed around there. And then looking at our vacuum gauge, we're going to want to see, and I'll, I'll hold the power valve up like this. We're going to want to see that when we vac when we apply a vacuum to it, it doesn't move. So this power valve actually is pre pretty good. I would say it's almost perfect, but it does have a very slow leak. As you can see, it's slowly kind of bleeding down there. Uh, but that honestly may just be due to my rig. But I do think in the past when I was messing with this, I was noticing a faster leak. So again... You know, I do think that this power valve is still problematic, which is why I replaced it. So if we increase the pressure, because it's a dual stage power valve, if we if we hit the bleed button here, um, and we, we bleed off some pressure, we can see when that power valve begins to move. So as I apply vacuum, just take a look at that, that top stem there. It starts to go down, and then it goes all the way down. And I'm going to take a look here because I can't see on the screen, but basically it appears that first engagement happens when vacuum drops below five 
And then the second stage is around 10. Um, actually, my bad. So that would be in reverse. Okay, my bad. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking the wrong way here. So the first stage uh, of of drop when the valve will begin to open is when vacuum drops below 10 psi, or uh, excuse me, 10 inches of uh, mercury here. So when we get below 10, we'll start to see the first. I felt it click a little bit, and it starts to open. All right, and then when it drops below five, it really opens all the way. Okay. Um, and then, of course, it continues to open as it approaches zero. And my point five valve just popped out of the rubber seal there. But anyway, you get the idea of how to test that, right? So now, I have a brand new rebuild kit here for the carburetor. I have yet to open it, uh, but I wanted to get a replacement power valve. So, unfortunately, unlike a modern or a... a aftermarket carburetor like a Edelbrock or a Holly or something like that there really isn't any you know just part by part replacement parts for a Motocraft 2150 carburetor it's sort of one of those things where you just gotta buy the whole kit or I could go to some you know exotic you know carburetor part website and pay a bunch for shipping for a you know five dollar part and so I thought I'll just get the rebuild kit and have some extra parts for later right in case I want to do a rebuild down the road so let's go ahead and open this thing up. All right. So we don't really need to look at anything else. All we care about is that power valve. And so obviously, what is that new component you got? The first thing you want to do is compare the two and make sure they're the same. And they do indeed look pretty similar. In fact, they look exactly the same with the exception of this little screwed in section at the bottom is sticking out just a little bit more on this one but again not really a problem that I see here and then we're gonna check for quick operation here of this valve and it does indeed move um, just like the old one did and in fact it seems that the old one sort of had some sort of obstruction whereas the new one sort of seats and and moves more freely so we're gonna go ahead and test this one now so we we'll take our, our little uh, rubber interface here and get it good and seated on there all right and we'll go ahead and apply vacuum to it and I did see two distinct so it will now release the vacuum Just trying to do this slowly here yes indeed so let me get a read on that and take a look here so it does seem to match the stock power valve. So let me bring it up to about, let's see, 12. And then we drop below 10, it starts to open. And then below five, it starts to open. So yes, we're getting similar performance here out of the power valve, which again is crucial. You wanna make sure that it matches your original. Now, unfortunately, uh, usually there isn't like a, you know, in your, owner's manual a thing that says your power valve has you know your dual stage power valve opens at you know you know 10 uh, inches and, and 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 five inches of mercury so you know I'm fortunate I guess that my original power valve still seems to function even if it's got a small leak so that's something you'll want to look up online um, and see if you can find specs for your specific carburetor overall it's a pretty simple process um, and it's something that you should definitely do especially you know I know that these things say you know if you open it you can't return it but if you buy it from somewhere like Amazon for example which is where I buy my my uh, my rebuild kits you can definitely return it if if you can show that this is a faulty part so if you have a rebuild kit as much as it's great to trust all the components it's hard to trust some that you can't actually see inside so I can see that an accel accelerator pump diaphragm is solid right I can look at this thing and say it's solid there's no tears there's no you know cracking it's solid so this is gonna work the problem with the power valve of course is that the diaphragm is behind this this stamped steel uh, or this metal I don't know if it's steel um, and so you can't see that so if it's blown or busted from the factory you have no idea until you put it in your car uh, in your carburetor start your car and find out that you're running all kinds of rich because there's fuel just leaking through that circuit so anyway guys thanks for watching I hope that helped you 
um, if you wanted to know how to test a power valve um, it's really simple um, and it can be very helpful when doing a rebuild and guys thanks for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and if you want to see more let me know in the comments below if you like this type of content